Welcome back. Right, we're going to look ahead to the champion, Betway champion chase by looking back at the weekend. And, and at the start, I actually tweeted, oh, Mr. Mole is back to his old ways. And then he goes and wins. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how truly can you look at that race, bearing in mind that Side de Grugia was a long time back off, fell, made one ter terrible mistake before he fell. Mm. Uh, what are your views on that? Yeah, I took a very positive uh, view on the race. Yes, the, what you've pointed out, but Mr. Moe, he has in his career been a little bit tricky and he showed um, that trait again by uh, going around at the start. Luckily for AEP, they didn't go off very quick. So the 10 lengths that he left, that he missed at the start, he can quickly gather up. One thing to say about Mr. Moe is, if you wouldn't want to be doing that in the champion chase at the speed they go, because bit losing 10 lengths, you Does could it concern you that it. it could get a bit tricky with Cheltenham with Mr. Mull? Yeah, you have to be concerned. Because I mean, he almost didn't go off, did he? Yeah, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a character. He's definitely improved. He's all, you know, for a championship race, he's always going to think, oh, you know, he's a little bit quirky. But looking at the bare form of this race, I, I was really taken We've by... We've got a graphic for that, have we? We haven't got uh, it for this. Oh, we no, haven't, OK. Not for this, but we will have graphic for the for the ratings of um, what I have him for the champion chase. But okay. Mr. Mr. Mole himself, I've got a real positive view of this. 176 gave him Mr. Mole. Now, beating up Sill and Blur 13 lengths. Now, up Sill and Blur, many may look and say, well, what is he? If you go back looking for some of his form, he was second to the likes of uh, Simply Ned, who is in the market for this particular race. And if you look, Simply Ned was two lengths behind that particular horse. Mr. Mole's come clear 13 lengths. Um, Sire de Guji in the race, obviously, he unseated. Um, so we don't know about him. There's no, Mr. Mole was going ever so well. You know, it's not to say that he wouldn't have beaten him if he stood up. And Durazandra of Alan Kings, he had that well and truly beaten. I know he's not a very consistent... That didn't jump very well either, did it? Not very consistent horse. But Mr. Mole, um, he's getting his act together. I mean, he's, he's unbeaten now um, in the last four starts. Yeah. Um, you can't crab him too much. And when you go back through his very early form, I mean, he was beating likes of Melodic Rendezvous as a novice. You know, he's always had that kind of class. The concern is, like you've quite rightly pointed out, is that could you have him on your mind for a champion chase with the tendencies of um, going round at the start? And the answer to that is no. He's 9-1 to one, uh, for the champion chase at the moment. Um, we will go into a bit of the ratings. I've got him identical in a rating, as I have dodging bullets 176. And when you look at the two horses out there betting, you know, it's almost uh, double the price. Isn't uh, it a shame, though, because moving on to Saïd de Grugy and Sprinter Sacro, I guess, to a degree, mm. you know, we didn't, we didn't see the two stars uh, match up in the, in, the cha in the champion chase last year. Yeah. And, and, and they're not, even if they do run, they're not going to be at their peak. Do you, do you know what I mean? One year you had Sprinter Sacra, next year you had Saïd de Grugy. Yeah. It's one of those champion chases now where it's a fascinating contest. Yeah. But there are lots of question marks against so many horses. Absolutely, and it, it's really tricky because you've got the class angles there. I mean, Saïd de Grugy, let's just touch on him at the weekend. Uh, he was going off just slightly odds on 10 to 11. Um, he, he, before, the, before the two mistakes, um, he travelled through the race show and... I didn't see, he looked like Saïd Aguji to me. He travelled, jumped well, and of course he made that mistake and then he made the, the severe mistake. Horses can make mistakes. Again, I'd be very concerned going into, I know he's going to have a race course gallop. He's not going to obviously have another race too close yeah. to the champion. He's a race course gallop. But the only thing I do remember is Saïd Aguji came back and, and run a race at Chepstow and I think he made a couple of mistakes there. I'm mm. going back at maybe a year, maybe two years. But it did improve after the first one. I think mean, he may have made a mistake at Chepstow or certainly jumped badly. And didn't win. I, I wouldn't give up on Side of Gucci, but I was disappointed that when, um, you know, when push come to shove, it made a mistake and then made another mistake. Yeah. And that and the confidence, and you've got to worry about that when you see. At least with Sprinter Sacro, it jumped round. Sure. Side of Gucci, you'd have that doubt in your mind. Yeah. The way it jumped. Should we get up the um, champion chase order? Yeah. Should we? Yeah, yeah. Um, that, here we go. Right now, your ratings. Now these are the ratings for the champion chase contenders. Now. This is based on these horses' performance this year, so the season of 2014 to 2015. So, Because it's important for me when I'm looking at form is that really what they've done last year or the year before really is irrelevant. So these ratings are of what they've done this year. Now, Boulder su Success, now he's obviously got a Ryanair entry. There's not sure that he's going to go for this race, but he has got an entry. He would be the top of him at 178. Champagne Fever again, he's got another entry. Might not go for this race, 177. I'd love to see Champagne Fever go for this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so would I. Dodging Bullets, 176. Mr. Mole, 176. Sprinter Sacra on what he has 
have done this year. 173, obviously last year, not last year, the year before, he performed to it marks a stone higher than that for me. But that's irrelevant for me because he hasn't done that yet. And this is what he's shown us this year is a 173 mark, hidden uh, cyclone, 172. And Sardu Gucci, I can't give a handicap mark to because obviously he fell. In terms of the race itself um, and some other selections, well, we'll go on to your horses in a second. Let's talk mm. about um, Sprinter Sacra. Yeah. Um, where are you with Sprinter Sacra? Oh, he wouldn't be, you know, I've got this, I've got this big issue. And my, my ex-boss, who was a bookmaker, you know, and he drummed it into me that when horses have had setbacks or injuries as a bookmaker, he would just take them on because he was under the, and I think it's right that any horse, you know, had been at the top of their level to get them back to that. You know, once they've had that setback, it's a niggly thing, like any sportsman. You know, there's a question mark to say. He wouldn't necessarily have to get back to his best to win it, though. I think on that, he'd have to improve, obviously, on his. Probably five or six pounds. Yeah, he's got. But, to, but he's not necessarily to the mark that he was before. I think yeah, I think um, he would have to. De yeah, five. I think an improvement of five pounds would put him bang there, um, bang there in the mix. And I think better ground, you might well, you might well see that. There was just that impression at Kempton. It was almost like. Uh, kid glove treatment that you know he didn't want to touch him and he didn't want to do it. and I think there's always like I think he's always going to be told Garrity even at, even at Cheltenham look after him you know if there's any sign of him not being right pull it and I think there's always going to be a sense of that with him um, and for me he's a horse that you look he might well go and win but it's a horse that I couldn't back on the day dodging bullets dodging bullets well he's been you know dodging he's a consistent one isn't he out of, out of all the seasons so far if you were to say, are there any questions about any of the form, you'd say there was none about dodging bullets. Yeah, well, I mean, this season he's been a revelation, really. I mean, he's a two times grade one winner. He wasn't really showing this form last year. He's a definitely big improver. On my rating, I've got him 176, which is bang up there. He's 9-2 to two for this race. Do I think that represents any value at this time? No, I think he'll probably well be that um, on the day. Obviously, beating Sprinter Sacra last time um, by those three lights. Twin Light was in that race and obviously won... Um, the Tingle Creek. There's, there's I think Twin Light won today, by the way. Did he? Really? In Ireland, I think so. D did he really? I haven't yeah. seen, I haven't seen yeah. that. I might be totally wrong, but I, I, I thought I saw that. that in the glimpse. I haven't um, seen that. But mm. there, there's nothing not to like about dodging um, bullets, really. The only thing I don't like about him is the fact that he's 9 to 2. And as I said, from, from my assessment of horses at the moment, there is you know, four or five horses you could have around that mark. So I don't want to play 9 to 2 at all. But he is the one. That hasn't got any question marks against it. Yeah, that's we're talking about we're talking right. about Mr. Mole. You know, on the day, will it will it will it start? Let alone run. Side of Gruzy question marks. Sprinter Sacra question marks. Dodging bullets has got the one Absolutely. profile yeah. that has Champagne Fever. Now, Champagne Fever um, is planned to run at Ascot on, on Saturday, which is quite interesting over mm. a further distance. Yeah, two and, that, well, five. and connections seem very keen on 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 not. I'm not swerving the champion chase, I'd suggest. Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that on Saturday, that it's, that, you know, I think they're going to hopefully come to the champion chase because I'm pretty sure, not to say that he definitely won't stay two mile five, but I think he's going to show the same tendency Saturday as doing too much early. But we're not Willie Mullins. Going through his race. <laughs> but I know, I know Willie Mullins will see <laughs> sense. And I do think he's a two mile... I, I mean, funny enough, I watched it back over um, Western Warhorse when it, when mm. it beat it. But it, it, it jumped for fun. Champagne fever, yeah. jumped for fun over that um, trip last year. And, and Western Warhols caught him. It's just one of those fluke results. I mean, if they run again, I wouldn't suggest that Western Warhols will ever beat it again. But for the pace of that race, I mean, I know against, against it was Trifonium, I think, was in that race as well. And, but it led, and, and I can see, you know, if the connections decide to go for the champion chase, there isn't an obvious front runner in there, and mm. he he could put them a lot. Champagne Fever could put a lot of these in trouble. Yeah, Champagne Fever at the moment um, six to one for the race. If it was no runner, no bet, you can find out there wouldn't put anyone off really getting involved at the six to one because he's one that if he did turn out for this race, I'm pretty sure um, he would be, and he'd be very strong interest in me. For me, if he turned up on the day, I think like three to one, seven to two, I want to be getting involved. I've, I wrote an article for the Race in the Head magazine quite recently, you know, asked him for Alpha Roth and this horse to come back to two miles. Unfortunately, Alpha Roth um, has had that setback this week, won't be doing it. But when, we, when you're looking at the form of Champagne Fever at Cheltenham, um, of course, in the Supreme, he won his race um, beating, you know, this must have been the best Supreme ever run, beating my 10 to yours or Jet Ski with 15 yeah. lengths back to the fourth yeah, horse. Yeah. 
And that form turned out to be champion hurdle form. So this is the kind of mark that he run to there. And of course, as you said, in the Arkle Challenge Grade 1, um, he won that. He got beat ahead when, you know, jumping the speed he showed. And Dodging Bullet was in fourth of that race. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, back four lengths. I know you can argue but, uh, Dodging Bullets is perhaps um, come on, but I'm pretty sure that if if Champagne Fever, I mean, must said he fell last time, but how he fell, I don't quite know. I mean, it, it might be a surprise, and maybe it will drop back in trip, but I mean, obviously, I running the will. King George was an indication they, they wanted to go further. I mean, this is, this is a National Hunt flat winner over two miles, so I suspect they think it, it, it would stay further, but I, it doesn't give me the impression that they're happening. I think, I think they'll make the decision. I think we're pretty much now on Saturday. I'm, I'm not hoping, but I think that the horse will be keen enough early and whether he won't truly... I mean, that's stiff, that is. OK, uh, well, that's let's awesome. quickly talk about Hidden Cyclone before we talk about your hidden gem. Yeah. Because um, we haven't got very long. Hidden Cyclone, very quickly. Yeah, Hidden Cyclone, 14's one. He's a 10-year-old. They've got a terrible record in the champion chase. I just thought he ran against Twilight last time. I know he was in receipt of quite a lot of weight, eight pounds for a five-and-a-half length beating. But I know he's held. he is held by dodging bullets. I just thought the visual impression was he was being eased up coming down to down to the last. I'm not suggesting that he's going to win this race. I'm just saying that, you know, at 14 to 1, um, I do think he's been beating a, a Ryanair before here last year. I've got him but 172. He's got to find a few pounds there. OK. Hidden, hidden gem time. <laughs> Everyone's sort of watching your treats and thinking, this man's crazy. He's gone for yeah. Irving each way in the champion, in the, in the, uh, champion hurdle. Champion Chase, I couldn't believe it when he talked to me about this one. But anyway, go. Um, it's your it's your time in the yeah. limelight. Yeah, well, obviously, I was. Nicky Rich has, has got a runner that might well go near um, Simply Ned, and Simply Ned himself. I've now decided a little bit against Simply Ned. He got beat last time on bad ground, was hanging. He did the, t uh, the same the time before behind um, dodging bullets, but I'm pretty sure he's improved. But there might be another one of Nicky Rich's that's at the moment best price, forty to one. Um, Eddard. Um, now, this horse last time we'd seen at grade two level in the Peterborough Chase. Wishful Thinking won the race. Wonderful charm in third. Wishful Thinking. Let's not forget what he'd done to that entry field at the beginning of the season. Eddard came to win the race, actually. Went off seven to four favourite, not unfancied. Uh, came down to the last, just got that a little bit wrong, and, and Wishful Thinking got a bit more momentum. But what I really liked about the performance was it looked like Wonderful Charm was going to go past, but he real battled on well that day. French Opera was in fourth that day. He was further sort of ten and a half lengths back. He's tied in Clattery to a few of these form lines. But more interesting, the time before that, over two and a half miles um, at Carlisle, Many Clouds won that race. Hollywell in third. Many Clouds has gone on to win the Hennessy. Obviously went and won the, the Gold Cup trial there. That was over two and a half on soft ground. Hollywell was behind. Yeah, and Hollywell behind. Edward, before that, at air, it beat Valdex of Alan King's 20 lengths. The question is, has he got the speed for two miles? What I'm saying to people out there, he's a very interesting runner if he goes for this race. Now, he is at the moment priced 40 to 1 in one place. That's actually William Hill. I'd advise people not to do that. Go and find a bookmaker where you've got no runner, no bet like I have and backed it. I'd rather take the 33s and make sure I'll get the money back. But he's a very interesting, very, very interesting runner if he went for this race. OK, right. We're going to take a quick graphic that will come up at the end of the screen. We're saying to you at home, if you want to get in contact with Matt, and ask your questions if you'd like to be part of the show. Uh, if any questions or racing topics you would like Matt to discuss live on the show, you can tweet him at Value Rater or email value.rater at outlook.com. Is that correct? Yeah, is that right? And, and uh, you get inundated. We, we only could deal with two at the beginning. Yeah, but we, uh, do, we do get a lot. And I mean, I have replied to some other people about other subjects, but keep them coming. Just but don't, fi don't feel that I'm going to miss it. It might come in a few weeks' time. But anything you've got aimed towards Cheltenham, so we'll be looking at the uh, next week. We'll be looking at the champion hurdle after the uh, the trial with Irvin on yeah. um, on Saturday, um, and then um, the following week we'll be looking at the the Arkle. So we've got some real exciting okay. uh, weeks coming up. Okay, well, fantastic. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry about my mic problems a little bit early on. We are going to be back next week at the same time as six o'clock, and don't forget we are on Sky this week as well, previewing the best days race, and that includes Ascot. We'll see you then. Till then, bye-bye.